Eleanor said that after 35 years of marriage to Franklin, she oftentimes had no idea what he was saying. Now, this is partly a comment on Franklin. It's partly a comment on Eleanor. And it's, I suppose, predominantly a comment on the nature of their marriage. Because without going into too much detail regarding their marriage, Franklin Roosevelt had an affair that was discovered in 1918. They had been married for 13 years. Now, this is one of those cases, and I deal with this in the book, but I have to, I'll, I point out in the book, and I'll tell you, that like every other personal relationship, nobody outside the relationship has any idea what's going on within the relationship. This is one of the conclusions I've drawn from life. When I see people that I know who are together for years and years and years and then split up, and who have been apart for a long time and get together, I don't think anybody outside a relationship really understands what's going on in the relationship. And I would add to that that sometimes the people inside the relationship don't know what's going on in the relationship either. That's sort of a separate matter. But anyway, so I can tell you various reasons why Franklin Roosevelt had the affair. I can make conjectures. But the fact is that he was having an affair. Exactly what was the nature of the affair, we don't know. I don't know. We weren't there. Not, no firm evidence survived. But Eleanor discovered the affair. She had suspected something was going on for some while. But when she discovered some letters exchanged between, well, more precisely from Lucy Mercer, the woman that Franklin was seeing, to Franklin, she could read the letters, she could tell the tone of the letters, and she had to face up to the fact that her husband loved someone else. That's what it came down to. Her husband of 13 years had fallen in love with somebody else. So the question then is, what is she going to do? And of course, this is a question that arises again and again. Now, it, it's played out in public with Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton. And when Bill Clinton was having affairs in the White House, what's Hillary going to do? And most recently, if you watch the news these last 24 hours, and you see the the pained look on the face of the wife of Elliot Spitzer. She's standing there beside him as he's making a statement to the press. What's going through her mind? Well, I don't know exactly what was going through Eleanor Roosevelt's mind, but the, the story that was handed down through the family was that Eleanor offered to give Franklin a divorce. Under New York law in the 1910s, if a spouse, especially a wife, contested a divorce, then the husband didn't have a chance of getting out of marriage. So the wife essentially had to say, okay, you can have a divorce. And the way Eleanor put it, according to the family story, was she offered Franklin his freedom. Now, Franklin did not take up the offer. Why not? We can conjecture, number one, he decided maybe he didn't love Lucy as much as he had thought. Maybe he realized that Lucy wouldn't marry him. Lucy was a Catholic, and Catholics are not supposed to marry divorced men or women. He probably understood that a divorce would be a scandal in those days, and that it would probably end his hopes of a political career. It was fairly common in America then, and it's, my father used to say, my mother, my father is almost 93, my mother is 82, and they both said that they would never vote for a divorce. Well, they said this before they voted for Ronald Reagan, but they said they, they wouldn't vote for a divorced person because, as my father used to say, and my father is as traditionally, and you can say sexist if you want, but he was as traditional to say, well, somebody who can't manage a family can't run the country. If you can't maintain the loyalty of your wife, then you, how are you going to maintain the loyalty of the American people? And this was a much more common view back in 1918 than now. So Franklin Roosevelt had every reason to believe that a divorce would end his hopes of someday becoming president. And there was one last thing, and this is where the story really gets complicated. Franklin Roosevelt had mother issues. 
He had a very strong, if I wanted to say domineering, I could mother. He was her only child, her only son. She doted on him. She was a widow for 30 or 35 years. She had married a man much older than she was, a man twice her age. And he died at uh, the age of 75 or something like that. So she was a widow. She was the only parent of her only son for an extended period of time. She lived almost as long as Franklin Roosevelt did. And she never was quite reconciled to the fact that Franklin had chosen Eleanor over her. And that's the way she interpreted it. She tried to break up the relationship when Eleanor and Franklin told her that they were engaged. She said, oh, no. She immediately whisked Franklin off on a foreign trip hoping that he would meet some other girl. She thought that Eleanor was beneath her son. Now this despite the fact that Eleanor was the niece of the President of the United States. Well, <laughs> Sarah Roosevelt thought everybody was beneath Franklin. She thought that Theodore Roosevelt was beneath Franklin. The President of the United States was beneath her son. And she insisted on maintaining the purse strings of the family. Now when I say she insisted, well, Franklin Roosevelt was complicit in this. He could have acted like any other adult male and gotten a job and become financially independent, but he didn't. He was willing, maybe even happy, to accept the fact that he depended on his mother financially. Eleanor found this exceedingly irritating because at several stages in their life together, Franklin deferred to the wishes of his mother over the wishes of his wife. And so if Franklin Roosevelt had mother issues, Eleanor Roosevelt had mother-in-law issues. But anyway, Sarah, the mother, made clear to Franklin that if he divorced Eleanor, he would be cut off without a penny. And the idea of having to go out and work for a living made him stop short and say, eh, I don't think so. So, Eleanor and Franklin held the marriage together. But there were two conditions that Eleanor imposed. One was that Franklin would never see Lucy again. That seems reasonable enough. The other condition was perhaps more problematic. They would never share a bedroom. Again, they would be partners, but they would no longer be physically intimate. And this was part of the deal. And Franklin accepted the deal. With the result that they lived under the same roof for a while, but then Eleanor actually built a house for herself on the family estate at Hyde Park. So they didn't just not share a bedroom, they didn't share a house. And Eleanor found all sorts of ways of occupying her time and energy. 